well, it's a healthy food, and it's very nourishing, and it's uh, very uh, tasty. It's like hunks of white, well, not quite white, but dirty white meat that are like hung together in balls, and it smells like fish. Traditional dish that you have for all happy occasions, like the New Year and Passover. It doesn't even have the consistency of fish. It's not flaky. It's just kind of all mashed together. It looks like a it looks like a matzo ball that's kind of wet and mushy. It's a traditional dish and a typical Jewish, but seems like everybody likes it. A lot of the Gentiles like it too. And that's kafilta fish, but you know, I think if you put it in water, it would never float. It certainly can't swim. I called yesterday and I left an order. My name is Marcy Silverstein. Okay. And I wanted like six pounds of fish. I'm going to make the filter of fish, so I need white fish, a little bit of trout, and buffalo belly. And is this the fish coming fresh today? Oh, great, great. When I was a little, when I was a small child, we had we would have uh, gefilte fish on Friday night. So I used to go with my mother to the uh, fish market because we always had to get a live fish be, to be sure that it was fresh. I'm going to make some gefilte fish for you, but I'm going to begin with filling up a pot with water and putting cinnamon in it and cooking cinnamon on the stove because the smell of fish is so atrocious. So we all don't gag. I will put the, the, the cinnamon in the pot on the back burner. That's number one. That's the first thing about making fish. Well, I don't make a filter fish very often. As a matter of fact, I've never made it all in my entire life. I usually don't have to because my grandma usually makes it, or now that my grandma is too old and she can't, doesn't have the energy and physically she can't make it, my mom makes it. I bought the fish yesterday at the fish market. And I'm going to clean the bones and clean out the heads of the fish and take out the eyes if I don't pass out. And I'm going to put those, and I'm going to make a stock that I put the fish balls on eventually. Here, let me get the fish. If I ever need any or want to have some with dinner or for a holiday, I usually take it from the refrigerator and from the jar. And this is the best kind, I think. You get it at the duck test and manage to have it to fish. Anyway, this is part of, uh, this is what really, this is like one of the secrets. This is where you get the good taste. The fish bones and the fish head gave the fish an added flavor. And uh, that was never thrown out. We, we always had to use that. I think this is Mr. Trout. Oh, my goodness. Of course, we had to clean the head out. We had to take the eyes out. We had to take the inside of the mouth out. Uh... Some people don't use eyes, and I, I mean, fish heads, and I sort of understand why. Right now, I vote for against it. No, there are a lot of reasons why I don't make it myself. <laughs> Boil a little bit, but the smell is great. I like it, it's like apple pie. It's mostly the time element involved. And to be honest, I can't stand the smell of fish in the kitchen when you're making it. And I think if I ever made it, I would never eat it. See, I'm putting the fish in the pot right now. Then I'm going to cut up onions and carrots, and I'm going to put in some water, and I'm going to make a stock or cook that for 15 minutes, if I don't think. Well, first we had to get a big kettle, and we'd line it with uh, sliced onions, and then slice some carrots and celery and parsley. But when I make it, um, when I prepare it, meaning prepare it for, if I'm going to serve it to people, it's always served, I always serve it the same way. I always put it on a plate with a nice little bed of lettuce because it makes it, gives it a lot of color. Right, 
The grandparents and the aunts and everybody, the older people that used to do it, used to have to do it with a wooden bowl and with a chopper and with hand grinders and electric grinders, and I feel very fortunate. I don't know if I could have made fish with all that work. I like to hope I would. The younger generations are making it, but they don't. But they don't use the uh, the old-fashioned way. They use the newfangled way with the uh, with the cousinard and with the the uh, with the part that you don't have to chop. Well, there's some Julia Child. Take a piece of romaine lettuce, you flatten it out, and you put it on a jar like this. You take your jar of gefilte fish, and you open it. <laughs> well, it's sometimes hard to open. And... Uh. <laughs> Ready? Okay. This is the chopping bowl that I use, that I've had for the last 65 years. And uh, it's still good. And this is the chopper that I had. This was belonged to my mother-in-law, and she passed it on to me. And uh, this is about 100 years old because she probably brought it from the old country. And we would chop and chop and chop that fish. <laughs> chop, chop, chop. And we chopped for, uh, until the, the fish stuck to the chopper. And sometimes we had to chop for over an hour. And uh, this was brought to my mother-in-law and she passed it on to me. And uh, I will probably pass it on to one of my granddaughters. If she'll want to make a filter fish. This usually works. It works with peanut butter. But that later on in years after I was married, was making the fish myself, I got a food chopper. It was one of these choppers that you would, uh, you would take, you had to attach it to the table or, t or to a chair. And then we would grind, we would grind the fish. Let me get some of the bones out now. Here. You can see some on here, especially. Look at bone. Some of the bones get ground up and you don't know. I know it sounds bad, but it's got calcium in them. They're not bad for you. I got it. Yay! Yay! This has just been ground for the first time. And this is the trout, the pink, and you can see the white fish. And it's the blend of the three different fishes, the white fish and the buffalo and the, the trout, that give the fish the consistency. I've only poisoned the fish one time. Ugh. Here we go. Ah. This is the chopper, this is the electric chopper. This is part, uh, it goes, it's an attachment to my, um, to my, to my uh, can opener. And uh, I, when I chop the, when I put the fish, I put the fish right in here, and I push it down with this. Okay. Now, after I take all of this out, I'm going to wash out the bowl and dry it and start from scratch again. And with that, after I run it through one more time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the mozzarella and the hard boiled and the and the fresh eggs in. The chopped fish, hard boiled eggs and raw eggs and onions and, and salt and pepper all chopped together. Those are the ingredients for it. Water, carp, mullet, white fish, pike, egg whites, mozzarella, onions, salt. Carrageenan, carrageenan, vegetable gum, natural flavor, and sodium glutamate. glutamate. Matzo mayo. Put egg in. The ice water for fluffiness. Usually in a family, and traditionally, you have, um, there's always just one fish maker, the filter fish good. maker in the family. Very good. We're going to make them into circle, little balls and drop them into the boiling broth. The recipe is usually passed down from generation or, or maybe a, a little bit of 
you know, a mixture of several other recipes. And I'm sure that eventually I will be the one who will be making the family. I'm making the balls about this size, a little bit bigger than a golf ball and smaller than a tennis ball. You want small ones, you're making smaller, if you want bigger, you, you use more of the fish. And, and you round it up and you put that in, in your uh, pot. And you let it cook for about for about an hour and a half, and then you come out with these, I hope, these beautiful white fish balls. One of the main reasons why I have to use take my cathilto fish out of the jar is because my lifestyle is so significantly different than that of my grandmother's or my mom's that it's really a necessity. My mother-in-law stopped making cathilto fish a couple of years ago, and since nobody else made cathilto fish in the family, I'm the one who picked up, I guess, the tradition. I had to stop making it because my health wouldn't permit it. That's why I stopped, right? I guess when I get too old to make a felt of fish, I hope one of my girls will start making a felt of fish. So the tradition goes on. But it really wouldn't surprise me if I, um, if even when it was my turn to learn how to make it, if I still resorted to using my Manischewitz gefilte fish because they're just a balancing of things and you have to decide which is more important. I didn't count exactly, but I I think I made about 20. I'm going to put them out here and let them cool overnight. See? This is cafilta fish ball. I think it's better if you make it yourself. I think homemade cafilta fish, I think, is better than the, the bought fish, but it, it's still very, very good. I know there's some day that I am going to want to learn how to make it from scratch. And the reason why is really just for the sake of, tra of tradition. There's no other reason I can think of. I guess I could have made, bought the fish myself and doctored it up from a jar, like a lot of people do. And it would have been easier and it would have probably tasted as good. Well, not quite as good, let's be honest. But uh, I think that making fish yourself is maybe a test of love or it just makes me feel good. Well, I think that my gefilte fish is very good. I think it's one of the best. And my family all liked it, especially my daughter-in-law's. <laughs> now this is a piece of gefilte fish that my mother sent over for me. She made it herself, regular homemade, the whole thing. Now, the thing is, that's kind of neat about gefilte fish from the jar, is that it doesn't look any different at all than homemade fish. All you need to do is put on a little piece of lettuce, like this. Got to decorate with a little parsley, a radish, and of course, proverbial carrot that goes right on top. And there you have it. It looks like it's homemade. It tastes just as good and it's a lot easier. Grandma, what is gefilte fish? I'm trying to talk it out. Uh-huh. Chop, 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 chop. Mmm. It's really pretty good. You should taste it. I am proud of myself. I get to tell you, this was hard work. <laughs> well, she won though.